Hello Aquarius and welcome to your new moon insight video for the lunar cycle beginning today with the new moon in Gemini and culminating with the new moon solar eclipse on the 13th of July. This is a very, very potent month for you Aquarius that initiates you into a summer of deep and profound transformation as Mars goes retrograde in your sign on the south node. He squares your ruler, Uranus. So this is a hugely powerful transformational vibration that you are going to be working with for the next two months. So this video will give you some insight into what is ahead for you as well as the energies that are affecting you in the now. So the new moon is going to fall in your fifth house of joy, of pleasure, of fun, of creative self-expression. So this is a beautiful energy because Gemini also rules over self-expression. It rules over the throat chakra. So this is a time where you can feel more inclined to share your creative endeavours with others. This can be a time where you can feel more willing to share your truth, to share what is in your heart with the rest of the world. This is a time for setting your intentions around what you wish to create, what you wish to birth into being and how you wish to express yourself. Um, for the next lunar cycle, Aquarius. This is also the house of romance, of sexuality. So there could be um, an essence here of you reconnecting with that side of yourself, of you know feeling that deep connection with other people, perhaps going out, having some fun, engaging in some social experiences, which you know will then lead to connecting with somebody special. Um, this is also the house of self-love, of Leo, of the heart chakra. So this is a powerful time for you to set your intentions to love yourself even more deeply as you go through this summer of revolution. So this is a potent time. This new moon opens a portal for the next three superlunations which are going to take us into eclipse season. And of course, those, some of those eclipses are going to be falling in your sign as well as Mars retrograde. So highly supercharged energy for you, Aquarius. So Mercury, the ruler of this lunation, is going to be in Cancer. In your sixth house of holistics, of health and well-being, of work and routine and daily structure. So this can be a time to really examine if you are nourishing yourself enough physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. This can be a time of checking in with what you are putting into your body um, through the medium of food and what you are nourishing your mind with, you know, are you feeding yourself with thoughts that nourish and support and bring comfort, Aquarius, or are you being a little bit too hard on yourself? Chiron is currently in your third house and he's going to be in square with Mercury at the time of this lunation, so this can really expose those thought patterns, those self-critical thought patterns that are causing you to beat yourself up that are causing you mental pain or anguish and this can also be a time of reworking how you communicate with your with your loved ones reworking how you communicate with your friends and partners because mars is going to be on your south node on the south node in your sign as well at this time Venus is going to be moving through your opposite sign, the sign of Leo, in your seventh house. And this is a beautiful energy. When Venus moves through our seventh house, the month of the year that she spends there can make us more magnetic to love. It can make us more willing to be open-hearted, 
more willing to compromise. So if we are seeking love, Venus in the seventh house can pull prospective partners to us. If we are in a relationship, it can create a smoother journey for us for the time period that she is there. It can open us up to an equal exchange of giving and receiving if there's been any conflict. This can be a really soothing energy. However, Venus is going to be opposing Mars in your sign and she's going to be squaring Uranus in your fourth house. So this is an initiation into the energies of the summer for you, which are very much connected with the polarity of self versus other. The eclipses are falling in your first and seventh houses. Mars is opposing the north node in your seventh house, which is your current point of evolution, Aquarius. So this energy is really calling you to look at where your need for independence is causing you to shut your heart down. This can really exacerbate your need for freedom, for liberation, Aquarius. You are a sign that already, you know, strives for individuality that is comfortable being alone, you know, that can be quite detached. And Leo is that fiery heart space, you know, that joy, that pleasure, that fun that comes from connecting with others. So this is a, a polarity an energy that's going to be really prominent for you. So just be aware of what is rising at this time, Aquarius. And the more you can learn to work with it, the easier your journey is going to be over the summer. Neptune is going to station retrograde in your second house um, on the 17th of June. So... This is an interesting energy because Neptune is the dissolver. Neptune is intangible energy. It's pure, unconditional spiritual love. It's high octave spiritual energy. <laughs> and the second house is our tangible resources, our abundance, our finances, you know, the practical realities of human life. So. Neptune stationing here can make us perhaps a little bit more likely to indulge in um, allowing our resources to be drained. So just be really aware not to make any big purchases around this time, not to make any investments without really thinking things through clearly. Neptune is where we can leak energy. So not just on a financial level, but where are you giving away those resources that are most important to you, your time, your energy, your abundance? Are they being drained from you without you receiving much compensation? It's really a time of taking off those rose-tinted glasses and washing away any of those attachments, any of those connections that are, you know, taking rather than giving from you, Aquarius. So just be aware that this can be a little bit of a ungrounding energy when it's in an earthy house as well. So you may need to spend extra time in nature around the 17th of June. You may need to, you know, carry some grounding crystals, keep yourself anchored into reality and not go off on a um, <laughs> spending spree of any kind. <laughs> okay, so the sun is going to join Mercury in your sixth house as we approach the solstice threshold. So for those of you here in the northern hemisphere, this is the peak of the year. This is the full moon point, the moon, the energies of the year reach culmination and the light will begin to decrease. We'll start to head into the darker months from this point on. In the southern hemisphere, this is the rebirth of the light. Even though you are cocooned in darkness at this time, the light is going to slowly start to inch its way back into your life 
as you build up to the spring seasons. So wherever you are in the world, this is a time of change. It's a time of transition. You know, we move from one part of a cycle into another. Half of the year is over and a new half is beginning. And for you, the sun, like I said, moves into Cancer, into your sixth house. So this is a time of the year where you might seek to start creating more order, more structure in your life. This is a time where you might feel the need to declutter on all levels. When we have a sixth house transit, we tend to want to get, we want to create spaces of energetic purity. So we might find ourselves detoxifying our body, we might find ourselves starting a new exercise regime. We might find that we have to just create order, you know, tend to those small details of our lives that build up to the big dreams. So, you know, we might need to shift our timetable around. We might need to make more time for the things that are important to us. You know, perhaps you'll realise with the sun in the sign of the great mother in the sixth house that you haven't been spending enough time truly connecting with your loved ones that you know you need to create space to cultivate um, those deep heart-centered connections so that will be going on for you until the sun moves into your seventh house as we move into July so of course the big event of the month for you Aquarius is Mars stationing retrograde in your sign, which he will be doing on the 25th of June. So this is a potent energy. Mars squaring Uranus has created a huge awakening, a huge raising of fire, of Shakti, of Kundalini energy for us all. And with it being in your sign and connected with your ruler, you will be feeling that more than most Aquarius. You will be feeling a huge awakening happening, a huge sense of moving up, a quantum shift in your reality. Mars speaks to us about how we use those qualities that are often described as masculine in our culture. So this can be our power, our sexuality, our will, our drive, our life force, our ability to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Mars is the divine masculine. He is the sacred warrior. He is the green man. He is Osiris. He is Adonis. He is Demutzi. He is the embodiment of what truly masculine energy is and means to us here in this earthly reality. So for him to be going retrograde in your sign, all of these areas come up for review in your life Aquarius. You are being asked if you are using your power, your sexuality, your will, your drive in the correct ways. How are you honouring and using your life force? What changes need to be made so that you can utilise your divine desire to create the changes that you wish to see? You are the sign of rebellion. You are the sign of unique individual expression, your Aquarius. And this energy can have you more fired up than ever to liberate yourself from anything that you perceive is constraining you, any kind of last vestiges of conformity, of societal conformity that you feel are suffocating your soul. This energy can make you really want to push against it. So this can create massive change, but if it's not used with conscious awareness, this energy can have you rebelling for the sake of rebelling. This can have you throwing the baby out with the bathwater as you instinctively push against things that you feel that are constraining. 
And this can be particularly playing out in your friendships, in your groups, in your circles and in your relationships because we're opposing the North Node in your seventh house. So this is a time, Aquarius, of you learning how to compromise, you learning how to balance your need for freedom with the need for connection. You know, this is where you get to see how your own behaviours are closing it off your heart. So it can be a deeply revealing and transformative time for you. And it's with Mars on the south node, there's this huge sense of you having to let go of the past, having to let go of the limitations. Because for some, for a sign that is so non-conformist, you can get very deeply entrenched in your beliefs, Aquarius. You are a fixed air sign. So this can be a, a whole rewiring, a repatterning of your nervous system. And Mars will be squaring Uranus in your fourth house, which can be asking you to liberate yourself from the old conditioning that you received when you were growing up. It's calling you to let go of what you think is secure, you know, calling your, you to let go of your attachment to familiarity and move into a space of even more expanded awareness. So this energy can be a whole reinvention of self for you and you may find that by the time this journey is over Aquarius that you have become a different person, that you have learned so many lessons that you are now presenting yourself to the world in a different way, you are resurrected anew. So this is one of the most potent summers that you will ever experience. You know, Mars hasn't gone retrograde in your sign since, I think, 1971. It's a very rare occurrence. Mars spends less time retrograde than most of the other planets. So this is a huge cosmic opportunity to die to the old self and be reborn like the phoenix. So we will be having a Capricorn full moon on the 28th, the midway point of this lunar cycle, Aquarius. And this is going to fall in your 12th house. So Saturn has been transiting your 12th house for the past six months. He moved into his home sign of Capricorn on the 21st of December 2017. So he's been here for six months. And Saturn in the 12th house can be a hugely heavy transit. This is a time when all of our subconscious stuff can come to the surface. This is a time when all of our karmic and psychic baggage can, can rise up and it can feel very heavy. You know, this transit is often associated with depression, you know, with melancholy, because you are clearing away the psychic fragments of the previous 28 year cycle so it's a heavy heavy thing and it can make you feel like very internal like you want to really withdraw into yourself so the full moon is going to be here conjunct its ruler conjunct saturn again highlighting your subconscious blockages and barriers highlighting those areas of your life where you are still clinging on to control where you are unwilling to surrender to the flow of life and it's going to be opposing the sun in your sixth house so there may be some subconscious stuff that rises that is affecting your health so you might become aware of belief systems or patterns or self-sabotaging behaviours that are affecting your health and affecting your ability to build your dreams. This can be an energy very much of diving deep into the subconscious and uncovering those self-imposed limitations. So it's a powerful full moon for you and a moon of 
you know, revelation. So the, the twelfth house is also the house of the psychic senses, of dreams, of visions, of connection to source. So really be aware, Aquarius, of what is coming through your intuition at this time. What is being downloaded from you to you? What wisdom is coming down from the cosmos that's going to support you on this amazing journey that you're going to be going on? So as we head into July, on the 9th, Venus enters your 8th house. So this is the house of Scorpio. This is the deep, dark space of the birth chart. And this can really highlight our deepest desires. So it can highlight what we truly desire in a partner, in our relationships. It can highlight our needs for intimacy, our needs for deep soul connection with other people. But it can also highlight our fears around love, our fears that we will be hurt, that we will be vulnerable, that we will be exposed if we open up to another person, which works quite powerfully alongside the other transits you're having, which are calling you to open your heart, Aquarius, to come in from the cold, you know, you are a sign that often feels exiled on the fringes of humanity, you know, watching people from a distance, but these energies call you inward to become open to love, to become open to human connection. And this Venus in the eighth house transit can really show you where you are still fearful of doing that. Jupiter is going to be stationing direct in your 10th house of career, of reputation, of purpose on the 10th of July. So this is a nice way to end the month because Jupiter here is an energy of blessings in many ways. Although he's transiting through Scorpio at the moment, which obviously means that we have to work through our deep psychological stuff before any rewards can come. Still, Jupiter stationing direct here can bring an amplification of blessings and prosperity coming through your career and life's purpose. So if there's something that you have been working towards, there's some goals, some vision, some dreams, some ambition that you have been moving through, perhaps you know, you've had, to, with Jupiter being retrograde since spring, perhaps you've had to really dive deep into your subconscious and clear out any beliefs that you don't deserve, clear out any beliefs that you can't achieve your goals and dreams. So as he turns direct and begins to pick up speed towards mid-July, you'll perhaps see an overflowing of gratitude, an overflowing of opportunity that pushes you forward to the next level of your journey career-wise. So this is a time when you can be, be very favoured by people in authority or where opportunities seem to come to you from the outer world. You know, people just seem to be more inclined to offer you things that will support you on moving forward with your purpose. So that's a beautiful energy to end the the month on um, and we close this lunar cycle with that solar eclipse, the first eclipse of eclipse season that is going to give us a little bit of a taster of what we can expect when the nodes move into Cancer and Capricorn later this year and this is going to fall in your sixth house so we talked about the sixth house energies about the health, the healing, the routines so this eclipse will be opposite Pluto in your 12th house where Saturn is also. So again, we're looking at this old subconscious material coming up, old fear that is stopping you from accepting the love, accepting the nurturing that you deserve and desire, and also making you very aware of the self-sabotaging patterns that are playing out in your health, in your work life, you know, that need for detachment and freedom can sometimes prevent you from knuckling down and taking the practical day-to-day -day steps to bring your dreams into fruition, Aquarius. 
so perhaps this moon will highlight some areas where you need to ground, where you need to view life through practical eyes. And it can also highlight some areas again where you need to create boundaries, but this will all be working in conjoinment with Mars retrograde, which is the main you know, crux of what you'll be working with over the summer. So I picked a card for you and these cards are from the Isis Oracle deck by Alana Fairchild, beautiful, beautiful deck. Um, we've used the deck of the Great Mother because we're talking about cancer energies and I love this card. It's so perfect for the Mars retrograde energies. I think this is probably my favourite card in the deck. Life restored, priestess of the phoenix. So is there any other archetype <laughs> um, better to describe Mars retrograde than the phoenix? We have to burn, we have to die to the old self, to be reborn. We have to let go of what is no longer working so that we can step into the new reality. And that's what that card speaks to. But it also speaks to things that we thought were finished, things that we thought were dealt with coming back into our lives. So it's almost like the past comes to knock on our door. We're revisiting perhaps a same old karmic lesson or perhaps somebody, you know, this is in your relationship axis, so perhaps somebody, perhaps a lover or an old partner or an old friend comes back and triggers you and you have to really dive deep and go within and clear out those old patterns. But it's also a significator that, you know, although you may think that nothing is is working, that, you know, the world is a barren place during this Mars retrograde, that all of your effort seems to be in vain, it seems, you know, to be just creating more frustration, that bear with it. Because when Mars turns direct on the um, 27th of August, as he begins to pick up speed, the results of all of your hard work will come to fruition and you will be reborn. So I hope that this video serves you during this transitionary time Aquarius. Thank you so much for listening to me. I am sending you so much love for this exciting phase of your journey. If you wish to connect with me further, you can check out my Facebook pages and groups and my writing by looking at the links below.